No, 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 no. What? Not now. Seriously, you're in your pajamas. What can you possibly be doing that is so important? Don't judge me, Janet. First of all, I did shower today, but I, I put my PJs on because I didn't quite know what to wear. Plus, I got, I got the sniffles. And second, these pins aren't gonna pin themselves. Well, all of those papers aren't gonna declutter themselves. What? Why are you looking at me like that? I am amazed that you could forget how much paper we had to go through. Oh yeah, that was a lot of paper to go through. So, going back in time? Yep. How much longer do we need to go back in time? I guess we can stop when the editor gets caught up with all the video footage we have. How will the editor or, or the folks that watch these videos know when the editor's all caught up? When she starts publishing videos with our current hairstyle? Ah, so back to the past? Yeah, either to the past or to Walmart because it's kind of all I'm dressed for. <laughs> Touche. Well, here we go. Three, two, one, blast off! To get started, as per the usual, with the KonMari method, I needed to gather up all the papers and put them in one place to start sorting. I chose my dining room table so I had room to sort, but much to my surprise, the papers took up almost the entire table. My table measures 42 inches by 80 inches or three and a half feet by six and two thirds feet. Many organizational and decluttering experts agree that since so many paper resources are available online or can be easily replaced with a phone call, most papers can be discarded. This includes credit card or bank statements, bills and receipts, warranties, user manuals, checkbooks, and paper menus, among others. Oh boy, wow. surprised to see the number of years worth of filed taxes we still had laying around our house. Needless to say, anything that was more than seven years old was discarded. And just for clarification purposes, here in the U.S. it's recommended that we keep copies of our filed tax records for seven years. So unless you live outside the United States or you've been directed by a tax professional to keep them longer, you're probably okay to let them go if it's been more than seven years.
Owners pay meals for stuff we no longer own. Don't own it. Goodness, this is a file folder full of. This is here, it's manuals for stuff we owned before we were married. Yeah. This is a lifetime diamond and color gemstone guarantee for, from K Jewelers for a pair of earrings my husband bought me back in 2010. They can probably look this up by your phone number, honestly, but like I've never had a problem with them, so. Okay, bye. Keys to a mystery item. stuff that I have. This is for Core Blood Registry, which um, we have both of our daughters Core Blood saved. But everything's online now, so I'm not I'm not keeping any of this. of the number of times I filled up my small recycling bin inside the house and had to empty it into the bigger one in the garage. By the time all was said and done, I discarded almost every single paper. As you can see, that was a lot of a lot. Before I get into all my takeaways, I just wanna make sure that I mention that when you are decluttering, it is not okay to declutter somebody else's things. Now, in the case of clothing, that was all my clothing. In the case of books, primarily those were my books. When I came across some books with my husband, I set them aside and I had him take a look at these things and pick which ones he wanted to keep and which ones he wanted to pass on. He made the decision. Now, where papers are concerned is a bit more challenging because sometimes the papers are solely his, sometimes they are solely mine, sometimes Sometimes they pertain to both of us, but regardless of all that, they were all in a community space. And what I did before I got started was I had a conversation with my husband. I let him know what I was doing and it allowed me to see like, hey, is there anything that you want me to keep? Um, he's a pretty easygoing person and he trusted me to take care of this in the best way possible. But I just wanted to let everybody know that I was not making decisions unilaterally. And that is how every area of the house is when we're talking about community things, things in a community areas, and things that 1,000% don't belong to me. If you try to declutter somebody else's stuff, you are probably gonna be witnessing the business end of a hissy fit and significantly damaging a relationship. Now we can move on to some of the other fun tidbits that I learned while doing all of this. The first thing that I wanna share with you is that if I were to do this all again, I'd actually do it differently. Now, you might be surprised by this. It might take a little bit longer, but I would have the same results. If I were to do it again, I would go to the garage, set a timer, and get through as many papers as I could. When the timer went off, then whatever could be recycled would go into the recycling bin, and whatever file folders were worth keeping, I could tuck those back away in the file cabinet and really not deal with all that mess on my dining room table. The first room that you see when you walk in my front door is my dining room. And so that kind of stressed me out a little bit, knowing that if anybody came over, they were gonna see this giant mess. I thought I would mention that and be open and honest with you because I was trying to do this declutter exactly how Marie Kondo says. She says to get everything out. She actually says put everything on the floor, but I found dining room table to be a better option so I didn't have to keep getting up and down off the floor. It's a great idea in theory to bring everything together, but seeing so much of it all in one place can be overwhelming. And like I said, for me, it was really just stressful. Editing Andrea here isn't 
video, Andrea, making such an adorable face. Yeah. So editing me realized that video me was not very clear about the second point, which is routine maintenance. In order to prevent the paper overload I had at the beginning of the video, it was important to establish some paper management habits. Now that I've explained this, the next segment should make a bit more sense. So the next thing that I learned on this journey was that I really had just let this go. This was a task that I just ignored. And in my defense, it was pretty easy to do. The filing cabinet, I guess, like it's saving grace or it's downfall, I'm not sure which. It's not a very pretty filing cabinet. And so for many houses, many years, the file cabinet ended up in two different basements and two different garages. It was always out of sight, out of mind. So it seems like, at least for me, most of the stuff comes in either via the mail or in a kid's backpack. It's really only one kid, but we'll get to him in a second. When it comes to the mail, I've gotten pretty consistent at bringing it in and immediately start sorting the mail. If I know it's junk, I toss it in the recycling right away. If it is addressed to my husband, I set it aside. And then anything that is addressed to me, I open it. If it requires any attention, then I'll go set it by my planner so that I can take care of it at a later time. Now, my son's backpack, that's the tricky one. Every evening I tell myself, I'm not gonna forget and I'm going to go through his backpack and look for papers and every evening I inevitably forget and find them the next morning as I'm packing his lunch in his bag. <sighs> So I would say that it may take us up to a week before we both get a chance to go through the whole stack, discard anything we no longer need, file anything that needs to be kept, or take action with anything that requires action. It's not a perfect system, but it is helping to maintain and make sure that I'm not letting too many things stay in the house. But what about the long-term storage, the stuff that is in the file drawer? Well, I decided that those things will be sorted through annually. I'm going to go through them in June. By that point, the kids have finished their school year and also taxes have been filed. Yeah, I know, they were filed back in April, that's not the point. I kinda like a multitasking moment, so I know that the taxes from eight years ago can be tossed, and since the school year is done, most of the papers, they're no longer relevant, so that means that I can probably get rid of a good handful of stuff to ensure that there's always a little bit of wiggle room in there. The final thing that I've learned is that I really need to have a much smaller boundary around how many papers I keep. Many professional organizers will call this the container method. That means whatever size container you choose, whether it be a file drawer, a storage container, a cabinet cupboard drawer, basically you're designating that amount of space for a certain type of items and that's all the space that you are allowing it. That file drawer that I have in my office, that's it. If we get to the point where it doesn't fit, it doesn't get to stay. That is all I have for today. I thank you so much for spending time with me and I will see you in my next video. Oh yeah! Well, I sound like the Kool-Aid man. Oh yeah! Yeah, stop it. I guess we can probably stop when the editor gets caught up with all the video footage that we have. Oh, you did it. Once the editor gets caught up with all the video footage we have. Okay, seriously. Uh, what am I trying to say here? Uh, I guess we can stop. Oh my gosh, people, stop digging! I've got this in like, like, don't disturb me mode. How is that happening? And for the record, I would like it noted. <laughs> here is proof, video proof, that I texted my husband and I told him where I put the papers. So if he comes back later and says I never told him, because I'm an Aries and I'm always right, okay? That's why. I found another relic for the Smithsonian. Does anyone know what this does? Anyone? Okay, cool. You need to sit down and stay quiet. Sit. Stay quiet. Oh dear, you're the boy. You're the boy.